Welcome to this detailed walkthrough of PowerWiz heat map, one of the most powerful custom visuals available for Power BI. Whether you're visualizing data intensity or comparing values across multiple categories, the heat map by PowerWiz is designed to help you transform complex data into clear, actionable insights. In this video, I'll guide you through the key features from setting up color gradients and labels to customizing axes, grid lines, and conditional formatting. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to fully leverage this visual to enhance your Power BI dashboards. So let's dive in and explore how to unlock the full potential of the heat map from PowerBiz. Let's start by importing the visual from the Microsoft App Source. I'm going to click on these ellipses here and select Get More Visuals. This will take you to the App Source where you will be able to download the heat map visual. I'm going to type in Heat Map by, and this is the visual that we will be adding to our Power BI report. And then let's click on Add. And now the visual has been added to our Power BI report. I'm going to click on Heat Map by PowerWiz here and add this visual to our Power BI report. I'm going to start by adding in the fields here. I'm going to bring in the category into the Rows section and the region here into the column section and my sales field into my measure. And now we have the heat map created. Let's head over to the advanced settings and explore the full potential of this visual. The first section that we have here is shapes. There are three different shapes here that you can choose from. The shape type here by default is the default one. You can choose the row gap here. If you increase the size of the row gap and then click on apply, you can see that there is more space added between the rows. Likewise, you have the column gap here. And then you can also choose how you want the corners to be. Right now it is sharp, but if you want them to be rounded, you can choose them and then click on apply. And now you have rounded corners. And then you also have an option here of custom where you'll be able to decide what is the corner value that you want. For example, if you want 20 pixels, you can simply type in that and then click on apply. And now you have more rounded corners. Now I've made some changes to the rows and columns here so that I have some blank values in my visual so that I can show you the next feature which is show null as. If you have a null value, you can choose how you want them to be displayed. Right now the show null value is set to blank but if you want to show them as null, you can do that. I can click on apply and now all my blank values will change to null. Likewise, if I want to display them as NA, I can do that. I can also display a custom value of my choice. For example, I want to display this as no sales and then click on apply and now this will display no sales. You also have the ability to change the color of your null values. Let's say for example, if you want them in red and click on apply and now all of your null values will be highlighted in red. And then you can also add the separator lines here. If you turn them on, you can add a separator line and then click on apply. You can see that a separator line has been added to the visual now. You also have different options here to choose from. You have a solid line, you have a dashed line, and then you have a dotted line here. You also get an option here to choose the width of your choice and a color of your choice as well. Let's say if you want an orange color, you can apply that and now you have an orange dotted line in your visual. Likewise, you also have an option here to add the border. I can turn on the border here and choose the color of your choice. Let's say, for example, you want a blue border, click on apply, increase the width, click on apply, and now you have blue border added to your shape. Now let's explore the different shape type option that is available, the fixed one. And there is a shape here that you can choose from. There are various shapes that are available here for you to choose from. Let's say, for example, you want to go ahead with the square one and then click on apply. And now you have these square shapes visible on your visual and the size here depends based on the value of that particular category. You can also control the shape size here. By default, it is set to auto, which will automatically be decided based on the values here. And then if you want them to be equal in size, you can do that as well. And all of them are now equal in size, but they differ here in terms of the colors. Likewise, we also have an option here for custom, which will let you choose the minimum size and maximum size for that particular shape. These are some of the sample visuals that you can create using the heat map visual. And if you have blank values in your visual, you can go back to the shape here and then choose the background color of your choice. Let's say for example, you want this dark gray and then click on apply, click on apply. And now all of your blank values will have gray color as the background. Likewise, again, you get an option here to add the separator lines. You can also add the border here of your choice. Now let's take a look at the next option which is available here called Diverging. Over here, you get to choose the icons of your choice based on the values. Let's say for example, from zero all the way up till 500K, I need a particular icon to be displayed. I can choose the icon here of my choice. Let's say for example, I want this circle to be displayed here. And for anything that is greater than 500,000 to max value, let's say I need a star to be displayed here. I can click on apply and then click on apply. And now you can see that all of the values that are greater than 
than 500k have the star icon here and all the values that are less than 500k have the circle here. Again, you have an option here to change the shape size. If you want to go back to auto, you can do that. Simply click on auto and then click on apply and now you have auto size applied to the icons. Now let's head to the next section which is data colors. There are various options for you to choose from starting from single. You can choose a single color of your choice. And then you also have the Power BI theme here. Whatever theme that is applied to your Power BI report that can be added to this particular visual. Likewise, you also have the gradient option here. You can choose the minimum and maximum color of your choice. You can also enable the mid color here and then click on apply. And now you have the gradient colors applied to your heat map. Likewise, we also have the sequential color. There are some default options that are available here for you to choose from. Let's say, for example, you want this purple and then click on apply. And now you have the sequential color applied to the visual. Likewise, we also have diverging color palettes here, like we have qualitative. You can also choose the color here by data class. For example, you can enter your from and to values and select the color of your choice. And then we also have an option here by color field. In this case, you will have to create a measure to decide the color for your region and category. I've created a sample measure here called color field. When I bring that color field into the color field section here and then go back to my color palette, select by color field here and then click on apply. You can see that I have the measure here, which basically says that if my selected value region is east and the category here is beverages, then return red. This is basically going to color the region east and my beverages category in red. Red. Now let's head to the next section which is data labels. You have different display styles here to choose from. By default you have the value selected but in case if you want to display a category as well you can do that as well. Once you click on apply here you have to create a measure here. For example I have created a measure here called label which is basically calculating the percentage here and when I bring this label section into my data label field here you will now have the category which is nothing but the measure that we have created here being displayed on our visual but in case if you want to display the category and value as well you can choose that as well and then click on apply you now have the percentage as well as the value being displayed on the visual you can customize the measure here that we have created to display percentages text values or anything of your choice and then you have an option here with, which is auto fit label and then click on apply the label will get auto fit here and then you also have an option here where you can define the max character limit here let's say if you have three character limit here and then click on apply you now have just that three character limit applied to the visuals and then um, let me turn this off here and then select value and now you also have auto font size if you don't want auto font size here you can simply disable that and choose the custom font size of your choice you now have the manual font size applied and then you also get an option here to choose the font family there are different options here for you to choose from you also have styling here bold italics underline etc and then the text color type here you can either choose to display them as auto you also have different text color type here by default it is set to auto whenever you have a dark background you have the colors appearing in white and whenever you have a lighter background you have the text color appearing in black but if you want to change them you have match data and then you also have fixed here you can choose the color here of your choice let's say for example you want to display the text labels in red here and then click on apply and all of them will now appear in red now let's take a look at the next option here which is the axis settings you can either toggle the axis on or off if you want to display the axis or not and then when you toggle them on you can choose the position of your choice you can either display at the top of the visual or at the bottom of the visual when i change this to bottom here i now have my x-axis being displayed at the bottom and then you also have an option here to display the title if you want the title here if you don't want the title to be displayed you can simply toggle this off and then click on apply you no longer have the title appearing on your axis likewise you also have the labels here you can choose the different font family styling font size background enable background the auto label chart limit etc Likewise, we have the same options available here for Y axis as well. You can choose the position of your Y axis. Right now it is set to left. I can change this to right here and then click on apply. My Y axis will now appear on the right. And then let's go back to axis settings. You also have the options here for title. You can enable the title here and then my title will now be displayed. And then you also have the option here for title. If you want to disable the title, you can do that. You can also control the font family, styling, etc. We also have the option here for label. You can choose the settings of your choice. Let's go to the next section here, which is the grid lines. Grid lines are available only in case of fixed shape or diverging shape. So let's go back to shape here and then go to fixed shape and then click on apply. 
and now let's go back to our grid lines now have the grid lines available i can now toggle the grid lines here for rows and then select the style here of my choice and then choose the width here of my choice I also have an option here to change the color of my choice and then let's say for example i want to go ahead with this color here and then click on apply and then click on apply i now have the grid lines appearing on my visual Likewise, I also have the option here to add grid lines to my columns and then choose the line style of my choice. Let's say, for example, I want to go ahead with the dashed line here, choose the width of my choice, change the color here. Let's say I want to go ahead with yellow and then click on apply. I now have yellow dotted lines appearing on my visual. Now let's head to the next section here, which is sorting. You can sort by either rows or columns. Let's turn on sorting by row. And then you can choose how you want to sort the row here by category or by sum of sales. Let's choose category. And you also have in sort order here, which is ascending or descending. Let me choose descending and click on apply. You can see that the rows are now sorted. Likewise, we can sort the columns as well. When I toggle this on, I have an option here to choose between region and sum of sales and the sort order as well. Now let's head to the next section here, which is the plot area. When I turn on the plot area here on rows, you can choose how many rows you can display on your plot. Right now I have four rows being displayed on my plot. Let's say if I just want to display three rows here and then click on apply, I now have only three rows being displayed on my visual. And then you also have an option here to display the number of columns here. If you just want to display two columns and then click on apply, you now have two columns and three rows being displayed on your visual. And then you also have the minimum cell size here. If you turn this on, you can choose the minimum cell width minimum height here of your choice now the next section here is the reference line you can add a new line of your choice where do you want to add the line the x-axis or on the y-axis let me choose y-axis here and then either by category value or ranking you can do that you can start from ranking let's say for example i want to start this from rank 2 i want a solid line here and then a width here of 2 and then the color let's say for example red and then click on apply i now have the reference line appearing on my y-axis likewise i can go back to edit option here you have different options you can choose the line position right now it's in the middle you can also display this at the top here you also have an option here to control the line position you can either choose to display at the top of the shapes here or at the bottom of the shape and then click on apply you now have the reference line appearing at the bottom of the shape you also have an option here to enter the label name of your choice by default it says example label but if you want to rename that you can do so you can change the color of the text the background here and the font family the styling etc you can also choose the position whether you want to display at the top of the reference line or at the bottom of the reference line and then you also have the alignment here if you want to display at the right side here at the bottom you can simply click on apply and now it is appearing on the right side of the reference line and at the bottom of the reference line likewise i can go back to edit here and then scroll down you also have an option here you where you can add the label border you can also control the border radius you can choose either between sharp rounded or the custom option here you can enter the pixels of your choice and control the border radius of this particular label you can also add multiple reference lines here let's say for example i want to add another reference line on my x-axis i can do so and this time i want to add a reference line by category value and then you can choose the category of your choice let's say i want to add a reference line on my south category here i can choose the region south here and then choose how you want the line style to be displayed the width of the reference line and then the color of the reference line let's say this time i want to go ahead with orange you can choose the position here i want on the left side here and then different label styles that are available the position the alignment orientation etc all of these options are available here and then click on apply you now have the reference line appearing on your x-axis now let's head to the next section here which is ranking and when i enable ranking here you have an option where you can display top n or bottom n rows here you also have the same ranking available here for columns as well now let me select top n here and right now i have multiple rows being displayed on my visual if i select let's say for example i just want to display top five rows here and then click on apply you now have only top five rows being displayed on your visual likewise you have the option here to display top n columns as well if you just want to display Display, let's say three columns and then simply click on apply you now have three columns being displayed on your visual along with top end you also have bottom end here let's say if you just want to take a look at top bottom 10 rows here and then click on apply these are the bottom 10 rows of your data and now the next section here is the total section i can enable the totals here for my rows or columns let's enable for rows and see what happens when i click on apply i now have totals appearing on the left side of the visual let me make some quick adjustments i can go back to my axis settings here on my y axis i want to display my axis here on the left side and then click on apply and now you can see that the totals have now been shifted towards the right 
and then let's go back to our totals here and I can make some adjustments here. Let's say for example, I can change the label of my choice. I can choose the font family. I can choose either to display the bar or not. And then if I turn this off and then click on apply, the bar is no longer being displayed. I just have the total numbers being displayed here. Let's go back to totals here. Let me enable the total bar and I enable the show bar here. I have two different options here, either the percentage of total or percentage of max. Let me choose percentage of total and then I can choose a color here of my choice. Let's say for example, I want this blue here and then click on apply and then click on apply. I now have the blue total bar appearing on my visual. Likewise, when I, if I go back to my totals here, I have the option here to add column totals as well. I can enable them and then click on apply. I now have column totals appearing on my visual. And if you want these total bars to appear at the bottom, all you have to do is go back to your axis settings on your X axis, change this to top, click on apply. And now you have your totals being displayed at the bottom of your we should. Now let's head to the next section which is small multiples and it says that add column field to enable this option which basically means that you need to add multiple columns into your section here. I'm going to bring in the subcategory field also into my column section and then you will have to enable drill down in this. So when I hover over this particular chart here and then I can drill down on this particular category here. Now let's go back to the advanced settings and now I can go back to small multiples here. I can now toggle this on and then click on apply and now you can see that we have the small multiples enabled on this visual. You can see here the section here for the central region, for the east region, for west and for south as well. And now let's head over to the next section here which is conditional formatting. You can use conditional formatting to highlight outliers or highlight any other data point of your choice. You can enter the rule name here and then choose the measure here that you have added and then choose the operator here whether equal to, not equal to, less than or greater than. Let's say for example I want to apply this to less than 500k. Anything that is less than 500k I want this to appear in the orange color and then click on apply, click on save. And now you can see that anything that is less than 500k is appearing in orange shade and the rest here are still continuing to appear in blue. Now let's head to the next section here which is show condition. This particular condition works based on a boolean value. I have created a measure here called show which basically is saying that if my subcategory field is filtered then return 1 else return a 0. It basically lets you select any value from a slicer. Only when I select a value from this slicer, this visual will be visible, otherwise this will not be. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to select this visual here and then bring in the show measure that I have created into the show section. And then let's head back to the advanced settings, go to the show condition. You can now enable this and choose the field here, which is show. Show chart condition is not fulfilled and then you can change the message here of your choice and then click on apply and then go back to report. And now you can see that since I have not selected any subcategory here, it says that show chart condition is not fulfilled but when I select any particular category here you can see that all of my data is now being displayed on my visual. We also have a lasso tool here which will let you select or highlight the categories here. You can simply drag them over the shapes here and that will get highlighted. And then we also have a reverse lasso here in case if you just want to exclude these or not highlight these shapes here, the rest of the shapes are now highlighted. And then we also have an option here to display the data as a grid view where you'll be able to see the data in a tabular format. Some more additional features here are available under the format tab here. You'll be able to set the title of the visual, the visual settings and in case if you're not able to see the advanced setting gear icon here, this may be set to off. That is why you're not able to see that. You can simply toggle this on. You have the option here to turn off the lasso, reverse lasso and grid view options on and off here. You also have an option here to turn off the legend here and then you have some number formatting options available here in case you're not able to format the numbers here. You can do so right from here if you want to increase the number of decimal places you can do so from here and if you want to change the display units let's say for example if you don't want to have any kind of display units you can do so right from here you can also add a prefix suffix here of your choice you also have an option here to display the footnote you can simply toggle this on and then you can display the footnote of your choice you can have a web url as well you can add a divider you can change the divider color the text size font size etc that brings us to the end of this comprehensive tutorial on the PowerWiz heat map visual. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful and now feel more confident in using this powerful custom visual to enhance your Power BI dashboards. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to drop a comment below and we'll be happy to assist. Make sure to explore other visuals from PowerWiz to take your data visualization to next level. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.